my Lord and my God. I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord. And therefore we contemplate you, Lord Jesus, in the Holy Gospel on that most extraordinary um, experience when you took with you Peter and James and John and you led them up a high mountain apart by yourselves. And as Mark tells us in today's Gospel, there he, Jesus, was transfigured before them and his garments became glistening, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking to Jesus. This is an overwhelming experience, where you, Lord, show your divinity shining through your humanity. It is, it's amazing, it's amazing. And then at a certain moment, a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out from the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Listen to him. Well, Jesus, that's what we would like to do in these ten minutes of meditation, of prayer. We would like to listen to you in the intimacy of our souls. That's an important thing about prayer, isn't it? Not just to go to speak with our Lord, but above all, and in the first place, to listen to you, to listen to Jesus. That's what God the Father tells us. That's what he says at this moment of the transfiguration. For those three apostles, Peter and James and John, the transfiguration must have been an absolutely unforgettable experience. And we can understand it, perhaps, Lord, as an aspect of your tender love, your consideration for them. You're preparing them to be able to face into the horrors of Golgotha, of the Passion of your betrayal, of your ignominious death on the cross. And you want to strengthen them and bolster their faith so that they can see in advance of all that sorrow and pain of the passion, they can see in advance that you are truly God, that you are divine, that through you shines the true light of glory. So it is a momentous event and no wonder we celebrate it with today's feast. But for the sake of our meditation here, I thought we could focus on the last part uh, of the description of this event. After all this greatness, after all this majesty, after the voice of the Father has come from the cloud, we're told by St. Mark, suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. They no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And it seems like a total change. It's after all the the drama of the transfiguration, after all that blinding light and wonder and glory, suddenly all changes and they see no one with them, but Jesus only. And yet, Lord, in this line of the gospel, perhaps we can clutch on to it because the truth is in our lives we generally come across you in a very gentle way. You are discreet, you are patient, you are not overbearing, you are quiet and above all we could think of you in the mystery of the Holy Eucharist, your real presence in the tabernacle. There you are Jesus, you are the Lord of glory, the same Christ, the same God, true God and true man. And yet in the quietness of our churches, in our local parish, in our chapel, wherever we are, in the oratory, wherever we we, we come across a tabernacle, there you are. As St. Josemaria writes in the way, there he is, King of kings and Lord of lords, hidden in the bread. To this extreme he has humbled himself for love of you. You, Lord, you always want to come close to us. And in a sense, 
you're so great that you can become small. That's the logic of God. You, Jesus, you become small so that we can become great through our friendship with you. And we see this, of course, in Bethlehem, in uh, which, interestingly, Bethlehem means the house of bread. There is there surely in, in, that, in that meaning, in that et- etymology of Bethlehem, there is a reference, a prophecy of the Eucharist, the house of bread. The stable in Bethlehem, in a certain sense, is a prefigurement of every tabernacle, where the Lord is there in a quiet, humble, discreet, but real way, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Lord Jesus, help us to, um, to love you more in the Blessed Sacrament. Help us to realize that you are the transfigured glory of the Father, but you don't reveal it all the time, because I suppose we'd be blown away by it, to tell the truth. And it's much easier for us to go up close to the tabernacle, to, to enjoy the reassuring um, symbol of the sanctuary lamp, which reminds us by its presence, by that little red light, and that you are truly present in every single tabernacle. St. John Henry Newman talks of the blessedness of finding a treasure unutterable, the presence of the eternal word incarnate, the wisdom of the Father. And this is what we find in every single tabernacle in the world. The world is full of your presence. The great English poet, Gerd Manley Hopkins, he has that poem called God's Grandeur. He says, the world is charged with the grandeur of God. Charged with the grandeur of God. Now, he may have been referring to nature in the first instance, you know, that nature is full of God's glory, of God's presence. But those words apply equally well and even more to the tabernacle. All the network of tabernacles throughout the world, like a great stream of lights, of burning fires, the presence of Jesus among his people, Jesus really, truly and substantially present in the Holy Eucharist. For us too, we could make our own that phrase of today's gospel, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. But Jesus only? But Jesus is everything. And Jesus is waiting for us lovingly in every single tabernacle. Edith Stein, who was a young Jewish woman, um, although she had went through a period of, of disbelief, really, of finding it hard to believe, uh, in her even in her Jewish faith um, period, she uh, was a great philosopher, very intelligent. And she recounts how one day she was visiting uh, with some friends a cathedral in a German um, city. She says in her autobiographical writing, We went into the cathedral for a few moments, and as we stood there in respectful silence, a woman came in with her shopping basket and knelt down in one of the pews to say a short prayer. That was something completely new to me. In the synagogue, as in the Protestant churches I had visited, people only went in at the time of the service. But here was someone coming into the empty church in the middle of a day's work, as if to talk with a friend. I have never been able to forget that. That's very interesting and very significant that in the life of this this great lady, Edith Stein, um, a key moment in her conversion towards Catholicism was to see the simple, straightforward prayer of a woman who had been out doing her shopping, popping into the local cathedral to talk to you, Jesus, in the tabernacle, to have a heart-to-heart, eye-to-eye, face-to-face, soul-to-soul conversation with with you, Lord Jesus. You are Emmanuel. You are God with us. And that profoundly influenced Edith Stein, who went on to enter into the Catholic Church and subsequently became Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, a Carmelite saint, a great philosopher, and a martyr of Auschwitz. She has been also proclaimed patron of Europe. So even our daily visit to the Blessed Sacrament is a very good thing to do, if we can at all, to visit the Lord Jesus every day in the Blessed Sacrament. That is a great act of faith, of hope and of love. And Christ the Lord awaits us there. He's there in every tabernacle. Like the apostles 
after the transfiguration, looking around, we see no longer anyone with us, but only Jesus. But in Jesus we have everything. We have our all. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this time of prayer. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.